First item on the agenda is the minutes from the April 15th meeting. I have a motion to approve those minutes. Well, it's a motion to approve the April 15th, 2021 meeting minutes. Thank you. Can I have a second? I second that motion. Thank you. The motion has been made and second to approve the minutes of April 15th as written. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? First item on the agenda is under old business. It is a petition by Christopher and Deborah Burnett seeking a special use permit to construct a small solar energy system in a dimensional bearings to allow a shed outside of the rear yard located at 415 Sea Meadow Drive of the Burnett's here. Joseph, look for the Burnett's. The Burnett's are here. Okay. Uh, if the Burnett's are going to speak, you want to swear them in? Um, I would swear Christopher Burnett in. Okay. You want to pull the mic up? Please. Thank you. Here, we're filming. Okay. Burnett, raise your right hand. Swear to tell the truth. Okay, full name and address to Bob, please. Christopher Burnett. For uh, address of uh, question 14, so we have a drive. Mr. Burnett, you're, you filed an application for a special use permit uh, so that you could have a small round mounted solar system on the south portion of your property at 415 C Meadow Drive. Is that correct? Yes. And in addition, you filed a petition. Or a variance to the extent that if this round mounted solar system is deemed a shed, you're asking for relief from the requirement that a shed be that, that the structure be in the rear yard because be in, in the rear yard. Is that correct? That's correct. And you put this this round mounted solar uh, system structure in the south portion of your yard at 415 Sea Meadow Drive, which is your side yard as well as a portion of your front yard. Is that correct? It is. And why did you put the structure in that location as opposed to in the backyard or rear yard? Backyard has a fully forested with tall pine trees and uh, uh, black walnut trees. Um, the shape there would make the school system for this. So we, also a steep hill. Uh, could you try speaking a little bit more to the microphone? It's all also a very steep hill and it can be uh, very difficult to construct a uh, structure. And would, would the solar system be effective in your rear yard, shaded area, as opposed to the sunny area in your side yard and portion of your front yard that is facing south? You no, know, it's shaded all day long. The rear yard is shaded all day long. And what about your 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 the side the, yard that is facing that is on the south side of your property. The side yard is a location where uh, most of the solar installers with um, shade measurement tools went to and found was the single best location on the property that had the setbacks. <coughs> you might be able to achieve the desired 80% uh, availability to the shade. Right. And the solar uh, structure that you built, um, is it? Um, does it meet the dimensional setback requirements of the zoning ordinance? All of them. Okay, and in fact, uh, it is located in your petition. You indicated that it's located 38.7, strike that 38 feet seven inches from your front yard boundary. Correct. Correct. Right. And the setback required is 30, 30 foot setback. Is that correct? That is correct. And the rear yard. Um, you indicated that it's 84 feet, seven inches from the year rear yard. Is that correct? It is. And the setback required is 30 feet. Is that correct? Yes. <clears throat> and then the side yard where it's located, um, it is, is it 59 feet from the side yard? That is correct. And the setback required is 15 feet. Is that correct? That is correct. And the existing lot coverage, not including the structure, the solar system structure, that for all the buildings that you have there. Um, hey, Mr. Cook, can I interrupt you for a minute? Sure. You're going over a number of uh, dimensional variances. Yes. But this has 
other than the, the if it's in the shed, you're here for a special use permit. That, that's correct. Okay, so I'm trying to understand where the and dimensional variances come, come into play. Um, the setback requirements for a small the small solar system under the zone of the solar zoning zoning ordinance right. must meet the setback requirements on the well the I, I understand that but you haven't gotten into the special use criteria the ordinance, the ordinance itself requires that you have a special use permit for ground we, on the solar. Oh, right and that's what we hear but i haven't had any testimony at all whatsoever about special use permit i've heard all about side yard and dimensional variants we, we, what we have to because it is a small uh solar system He's entitled to a special use permit, provided that it meets the setback requirements. Well, provided that it meets, provided and provided meets the special use criteria. Right, right. And I'm going okay. to get to the. Okay. There's two cri criteria. There's other criteria. Yeah. Go ahead. I mean, so it, it, to sum that up, I mean, the application for the, in terms of the dimensions that you submitted in your application, are, are all accurate, correct? Yes. And. Uh, one of the requirements for a special use permit for the issue of a, a small solar system uh, is that you require is that it's you're required to have all applicable state permitting from uh, the, the all right. Now the system that you built, Mr. Burnett. Is it com consistent with all applicable state and federal fire and electrical safety codes? Yes, and I've done this before, so I know it is. And um, now you do not have not yet obtained the statewide solar building and electrical permits, correct? I have not because the uh, 50 pages of state permitting requirement documentation was submitted to the town of which the building inspector's office in may of 2019 was lost we submitted in october was posted on the electric golden board in december and has and never been point. submitted to any but beyond that despite a formal written request to do so mr burnett you're you admittedly do not you have in your hand the statewide solar building and electrical permits yet. Is that correct? That is correct. And as a condition to the granting of this special use permit, because your, your structure was built before you brought this application, correct? It was built before there was an ordinance in the town of Fort It was 18 months ago before this. But but is a condition of you get it, obtaining your special use permit, you would obtain or seek to obtain the statewide solar building and electrical permits from the building commission, correct? I have done so repeatedly. All right, but you haven't yet obtained them and you'll continue to seek those items, correct? Yes. And you actually need to obtain them to actually get a final uh, special use permit. I needed to get the grants from the state. I needed to get the utility to hook me up as a net meter, although my system is a behind the meter, battery backed grid independent solar system that provides electricity for my home only. And by the way, the for a small solar system um, that under the current ordinance of uh, Portsmouth ordinance, you cannot have more than 1600 square feet of solar panels. Is that correct? That is correct. And your you have 364 feet of solar panels, is that correct? Less than one quarter. And it, that's 364 feet, correct? Which is why I only produce about 60% of my electricity. I'd like to produce more. You'd like to pr produce more, but you only have your solar rack is, has 364 square feet, correct? Yes, it's actually a, a solar rack that's 364 square feet, and then there are two solar panels on, a, uh, on another small garden shed that's never been cited or in detention. So it's a total of 24 panels, 22 on the rack. And this the larger rack. And this uh, solar rack that you built adds an, a, a, an additional 1.52% of lot coverage. Is that correct? 
Yes, well under the standard of the state. All right, and your total lot coverage with all dwellings in, in, in all structures on your building totals uh, 39, 3,939 square feet. Is that correct? Yes, I believe that's 17% of the lot of trees and lot of bushes. All right, that's 17% of your total lot coverage, correct? Yes. Now, in terms of uh, you're, you put the solar panels up there, you're just looking to generate solar to reduce uh, the harmful effects of greenhouse gases in the environment, correct? Correct. And can you tell us about whether this particular solar structure is visible from the street? No. Why is it not visible from the street? Bushes that are about eight, 10 feet tall. I feel the so much. By the way, how tall is the solar structure, solar rack structure that you built? 11 and a half feet, 12 was the requirement in the ordinance finally passed. All right, 12 is the requirement and yours is below that, right? Right. And by the way, the solar rack structure, uh, can you describe how it, uh, it, it has a, um, sound, is it, does it have a foundation? No, it's mounted on, it's mounted on blocks because it's mounted in the location in the yard where the sun is shining, and that's where the power line comes into the house and the power line. It's also located on blocks because that's where the septic system is in the yard. It's also located there because the new NEC code requirements, since I put the last one in in my home in New Hampshire, required you to have a cutoff for a DC based system. This system is fundamentally different. 98% of all the solar systems you'll see in the state, which are AC connected systems. Right? Now, so it's not, so it's on blocks. How is it That's secure? That's the safety of the environment. That's for the safety of the environment. How is it environment. Environment. How is it secured so it doesn't blow away when a heart comes? First of all, it's made with very heavy, heavy materials throughout. I used a four by four PT wood. I used, um, I used a, a three by six construction. And my initial intent and what was in all the early documentation was that this would um, house the uh, firewood and the pellets, which I used to heat my house. My house is totally green. I used a wood pellet boiler. I use a wood stove and uh, I use bio. -heat. So in order to do that, uh, it uh, is, is designed in a fashion such that you can put not out of the weather, but it's not completely out of the weather. Firewood that you want to dry wood. So I, I had having one cord now, but I, I had three cords in it, but I took it out because the town objected to okay. that characterization. So, and I had wood pellets. How, how is it secured so it doesn't blow away when the hardship comes? Same way a house is secured by weight. By weight. And you what sort of weights have you installed? Well, it's, it's very heavy because the uh, the structure itself includes not only uh Beefy uh, construction techniques like uh, two bolt construction, hurricane tie downs, but it's also uh, designed with, uh, of course, all the solar panels at the top of it, all the metal stripping, all the uh, roofing material, and so forth, so it looks like a house. But in this case, instead of the house sitting next to it, which has had storm damage from all the hurricanes and gone through since I've been here, um, and I placed a few hot holes on it. It's not nailed together, it's screwed. It's not uh, nailed together at the, at the beams. It's bolted with through bolts. Each of the panels are, are connected to a pressure treated two by four with stainless steel bolts at four points. And then those are then through bolted through the roof itself. One of the advantages, several of the advantages of doing a ground mount is that um, you uh, can uh, not have to worry about Linkage in your roof that you would in a normal house over time, particularly as the roofing ages. Other advantage is that you are not subject to lightning strikes because the structure is rounded and the house of Tiverton just burned down last year, and that one happens all over the country. Electric on the roof, it also is easy to clean them. I've done that before, but they get dirty. It's also easy to get the snow off, it's the effectiveness of winter. It's also easy to repair the wiring. I've done that with solar systems as well. You know, all the tools and so forth to do that. All of these factors, including broken panels, which I've had from branches, can all be done on the ground mount much easier. And it is far safer for the energy personnel. It's obvious, it's there, the cutoff is right in front of you. 
I want to just remove the meter. So, by the way, now does it have? It has a, a roof. Is that correct? That the roof is where the solar panels are. It, it has a PT a, a pressure treated wood with a roofing cover cover on it, and then a special secondary roofing material on it as well. Did, did you? Uh, and then again, it's and the entire thing is screw bolted, which is not normal with that roof mounted solar system. Does it have other than the roof? By the way, what angle is the roof? Forty to forty three degrees optimized for this latitude. So that you can get the maximum amount of production out of it, which is not possible in the roof of my house, which both face east and west. So and from, from the peak of the, the, the from its height at 11 and a half feet tall, it pitches downward at 45 degree angle basically, to, yes. to the ground essentially. Basically, yes. I did I did a, a small bend at the top to get under the 12 feet. And while still going right to the ground. And by the way, if you get a hurricane that comes from the south or the worst wind damage, like 38. Or 55, this thing will get compressed into the ground because it faces due south because the wind. If you get it coming from the other angle, like you know, from Superstorm Sandy and all that, the house itself blocks the entire ascent. Now, it's far safer than a roof mount. Are there doors to the, to the structure? No, potentially so. But does it have a, a sub flooring? It has a sub flooring on it, yes, and it also has plywood. In certain areas, because that structurally strengthens the, the structure so that you can meet the 135 mile per hour wind requirements coastal wind. So when you use a when you use a PT uh, three quarter inch plywood, you make it structurally much stronger. And then so that it would fit into the neighborhood, I shingled those with uh, uh, typical cedar shingles, and I painted them the same gray color as the house and the trim as well to make it blend in, so it doesn't look ugly. Like all of these ground mounted solar systems you see like a residential. Now, does what does your do you know of any detrimental effects that your solar system would have on the public health, safety, welfare, or morals of enforcement? No, it makes no noise. There's no glare. The only way you can see it is from a drone or from the one neighbor that happens to be due south of me, which says it's fine, at which they set up and put it up. And uh, it uh, doesn't make any. And I just went across the street in the last month and a half and I asked five of my neighbors above me, well, the ones below can't see it by the terrain. We had a lawn for a steep hill. Now, and it, it's on the wall, and none of them even knew it existed. Now, is it, have you asked for the building inspector to come out and inspect it? Four times in the first month after he cited me back in May of 2019, I went up to him and first did it. I did it in writing three times right. that month. Okay. I've done it at each court meeting. Now, is it your understanding that the building inspector won't inspect it until you get approval from his own court? That's what his position has been uh, since about one year ago. Um, before that, he wouldn't inspect it because there was no solar ordinance, okay. so he had nothing to inspect. All right. And so, so as of so, May, he was sick. Okay. So, the part, your current understanding from the building official is that he won't inspect it until you get zoning board approval to have the structure there. That's correct. He has been very, very consistent. So yeah. he's, never, he's, so he's never set foot on the property, he's never called me, he's never okay. asked. He's right. never done anything. Now, now for you to take the take the structure that you built down, resubmit an application, it's only for just take it down, come back here, and take it apart to, to down nothing. Would that cause you a, a hardship? Well, exceptional hardship, especially considering the fact that now my son and daughter-in-law, my grand two grandchildren have moved into the house as of the last. We just left the service in June after 16 years of service, the Navy pilot, 3,500 hours, just came off his third combat tour in Somalia. And uh, he's come, and the Navy movie van showed up a week and a half ago. So my wife and I have uh, moved all of our furniture out. We have moved out of the property. So that would be a complication. The second one would be, it would obviously cost. The order of fifteen thousand plus in order to take it down, another five to ten thousand to put it back up again. It took me twenty-three thousand twenty-five to build it in the first place. So 
But, uh, and I probably will so, do it here at Kick It. To, uh, so that 15 to 25,000, 15 to 20,000 in expenses, would that be labor costs? It would be a labor cost to take it down, other other efforts that would be associated with it. And I'd have to move it. I'd have to uh, dig up all the cables. I'd have to dig, dig up all the uh, electronics. I'd have to remove the, the uh, inverters from the walls. I'd have to remove the batteries from the house. I have to remove all the things that have been functioning perfectly properly, perfectly safely, perfectly effectively for 27. Now that your structure was built before the zoning ordinance was passed, correct? The solar zoning, solar zoning. Not only was it passed before the zoning ordinance. Excuse me, for the, for the record, could you give us a date of when it was installed? Sure, sure, I will ask my client. Okay. When, when did you build the structure, the solar structure? The solar structure was built between April and uh, Mid June of 2019, the solar system itself, I commenced purchasing in 2018 after the state of Rhode Island had approved battery bag systems. For that, they were on the fence about whether they would allow it, but they did in January of 2018. I purchased it as a, a self installed kit from a local uh, group that does uh, green energy systems, including wiring cable, batteries, inverters. Uh, panels, uh, cutoffs, and all of that. I put you the package. So in the fall of 2019, I commenced the re-electrification of my house because this is all set up to run 95% of the circuits in my house through the battery back converter system. And I um, completed that in December. And then in April, when the weather cleared, I went outside in order to uh, put the last piece of the system together, which was the um, Solar capture uh, capability for a solar rack. And, um, and by the way, ballasted brown mounted solar rack is a standard term in the solar industry. It's used all the time for solar systems that can't be dug into the ground. For example, if you go look at the Walmart, so you go look at big stores, they throw Okay, and this is a ballasted system. It's this, it, it was intended to be a ballasted system, but the ballast was what caused <coughs> continu continuous contention with the building inspector. One of the reasons why we're asking for two variances here, one the special use variance for a ground mounted system required under the new solar ordinance passed 18 months after it was completed, and the other is for a variance to allow me to have basically a woodshed so that I can put the wood on it and so that it can be held down in case there was any possible risk of 100 and 250 mile an hour winds blowing at the same thing wrong end. Keeping in mind, that the most damage it'll actually put it into the ground, not out. And it's built way better than the houses built next to it. Now, when you were, um, you actually were here over a year ago or about a year ago, I attempted to come here, but I was not allowed to build it. Oh, you had an application, you did it remotely. We attempted to go to the July zone, uh, zoning board meeting, but um, my wife and I have never done Zooming. We, did, we didn't quite get that one uh, electronically down right with our DSL from New Hampshire. We did it in uh, August of 2019 prior to the the ordinance being actually finally committed and put into code. So it was actually heard on August 20th. Uh, so you were, it was heard on August 20th, and you were denied a special use permit at that time. And a 3 2 vote because of the lack of inspection. Because, because it was specific. But you're willing to have the inspections, the, obtain the re requisite. State. State, statewide solar building building I and electrical problem. permits set forth in the order. Nothing that hard. And you also I to, want, I actually hold, like my grant. Hold on. And you've also, to the extent that it's deemed a shed and it's found position is that it's a shed that are now bringing a request for a variance from the requirement that a shed be in the backyard. Is that correct? That is correct. And I believe there's also a size issue too, because if it works for a shed, you have 160 square feet of footprint. That's allowed, but in this case, just in order to mount 22 solar panels at 45 degrees, it's larger than that footprint. So that's why the variance um, kind of a little bit 
tricky, but it's not shit. It's a solar rack. It was built as a solar rack. It's wired as a solar rack. Its purpose is a solar rack. We understand that, Mr. Burnett. Burnett, you've been very forward on trying to force you us to understand it. We do understand it. Okay. So, so we could just proceed along. So I think that, uh, that completes my testimony from Mr. Burnett. Okay. Do you have anyone else? Now, Mr. Burnett, please say that I have a number of questions. Do other board members as well? Um, I, I would present Fort Chappelle as an additional witness. Okay, if you are going to present Mr. Chappelle as a witness, then I have to recuse myself. You're going to have to step down and have to start all over again. Because Mr. Chappelle acting as uh, the town prosecutor is currently involved in the case where a family member happens to be a defendant for those, so therefore that would be a conflict of interest to me. So if you want to bring him up, that's fine. We'll have five. I'll step down, but you're not starting all over again. Is, is the fifth going to be um, the person who's here? Well, who's actually, Mr. Borden. It wasn't even here for the beginning anyway. Oh. So it would be us live right now. It's entirely up to you on you want to proceed. Can you make your inquiry with my client? Oh. Um, I answered the questions you might have. Oh, I you can answer the questions, but he was going to bring Mr. Chappelle up. Well, I would, I would bring, bring Mr. Chappelle up after he answers my client answers your question. If you bring him up and make him part of this, I can't participate. Right. I write a conflict of interest. I am, I'm hearing you. Okay. And you would have to start it all over again because we have no quality. Exactly. Right, exactly. Okay, that was point. That is the point. Like I said, is that something that has to happen in court? As the prosecutor, the history and travel of this case was specifically as needed to the building inspector to proceed. And he'll call on me and call on me. I'm going to defer to Kevin. Yes, Kevin. Right. Well, as a witness. Right. I was well, expected to be called as him as a witness. Right. I would have stood up for quite frankly clarity purposes and said, here's how we got here. Right. You know, explain the history and travel in the municipal court. What has happened? Well, how we, the building, we heard that before in the original one. Well, how the building inspector did it, right. what the building inspector was willing to do. The one that was, there was a three to vote regarding approving this after. Uh, I wouldn't go too much more. But, you know, just, I have, I have a right. five minutes of what happened and why and what I believe needs, not what you do. Yeah. Just, I, can't, I can't even entertain. Okay, much yeah, more, right. so but it's entirely up to you, Mr. Cook, what you want. Well, I, I'm not going to call Mr. Chappelle. I mean, Mr. Chappelle wants to add. Well, if he adds anything, I have to step down. I'm not going to add something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I actually yeah. believed that it would help. And if so, it wasn't, I, yeah. had, I had no idea you had somebody on like your calendar either. But, yeah. So. So, Mr. Spell, just that may affect other things tonight. I will have to step away. Okay. All right. So, Mr. Cook, you're going to proceed without Mr. Spell, right? I'm going to proceed without Mr. Spell. Okay. Then I have a number of questions for Mr. Burnett. I do. I'm sure there's other members of the staff. So, um, Mr. Burnett, um, are you a uh, registered engineer at all? I have a BS and I built homes. Built um, my own home. I'm, I'm just asking. No, I do not. I'm not a registered engineer. No, that is correct. Mr. So you're not a structural engineer. No, but I know I do okay. construction as as you are. Are you a licensed electrician? No, but I hired them to do my work. Okay. Are you a licensed reg uh, registered renewable energy professional in the state of Rhode Island? No. Okay. So, the structure was built in 2018-2019 by the ordinance. Everybody's relying on the ordinance. Are you aware that in 2014, the state of Rhode Island instituted a new law requiring anybody to install 
a solar system, whether it be ground mounted, whether it's small, residential, or large, is required to have a white space in the state of Nevada. Similar to myself in the refrigeration trade, I have to have a professional license as well. Okay. Those people are allowed to do what you've done. With the exception of any electrical. I could find no one who could do an off-grid system I tried. Eight different people. Well, none of them had experience in that particular arena. They all wanted to well, do a different kind of solar system. Well, I also hired two of them that were supposedly licensed in New Hampshire. I had to take one to small plane support because he had no clue what he was doing. The other one did it wrong. There are a lot of unique attributes of DC-based off-grid battery back systems that are beyond the system. Mr. Burnett, I'm not even talking about the electrical right now. I'm talking about the structural Just part. Of it. Have have electricity. Uh, I'm talking about the structural part. So it was installed by an unlicensed person. It was assembled by me and an unlicensed person. That is correct. Cool. Okay. And the electrical work was done, you claimed by licensed electricians, but they didn't pull an electrical. Okay, so not required to in the state of Rhode Island to do inside electrical work. Um, no, that's incorrect. According to the state of Rhode Island Ren Renewable Energy Special Laws, you need a licensed electrician to that's make not an true with inside electrical work, sir. Any electrical work. I, I've got the copy of the laws. Right? I, I've been told by multiple electricians that we have to go research it. I've been told that you can do inside electrical work and put in an if you have 50 year old, if you have 50 year old panels in your house, you can okay. replace the panels. All right. So now it goes on, and I'm going by your application, and we'll talk about the balance. So if for some reason the wood wasn't allowed, what could you alternately use as a balance? I offered to the tap to the building inspector that I put gravel in if they wanted. Okay. Is there any design as to how gravel would be held in? Yeah, because it's a it's a, got a two by six construction. You simply put it in. Underneath the floorboards that are existing there, and you would put a, a structure below that. So it and so what, the balance to the, the what the, wind load would that sustain? You know, would well, more than the roof in my house, sir. But that again is speculation because you're not an engineer. And my point to all of this is I was one of the ones that voted against it. I know you were. Okay. And part of it was under this is that it will not create a nuisance or hazard in the neighborhood. Okay. And I haven't seen anything that's changed from the original one that says, oh, it's structurally sound, it's electrically sound. Part of your thing says you're using a cord of wood as the ballast. And I could counter that by saying, what is a cord of wood weigh? Typically two to three tons. Okay. And anyway, originally, and when, originally, can, and can, I, can, I, can I finish my question? One to two tons of what type of wood? Is it balsa wood or is it oak? It's, that's why very This is what I mean. There's nothing concrete. But but if you put wood pellets in there, which is what I originally had three okay. tons of wood pellets, and it's a ton. And, and on one point, I highlighted it. You state the system was installed by Rhode Island qualified tradesmen and electricians. It wasn't. Yes, it was. No, the you, electrical you, just, work, you just stated. The electrical it. work was done, and the, and the tradesmen that built, built homes in Rhode Island. No, you just stated that you built it and you're not. I no built license. it with tradesmen that work in Rhode I, Island and built things. I, I, you know what? I, I'm not even going to go on from there because it, it's no matter what I say, you're just going to twist it. But can you define what very heavy, beefy construction is? That was exactly your term you used a little while ago. I told you it was pressure treated four by four verticals, which is larger than what you usually use on most shed construction. It's two by but six. This isn't a shed now. Two by shed. six, but it's something that's constructed in the shard yard that the town has claimed for the 27 months as a shed. So it's also built with the same construction that my house is, is a two by six flooring boards and two by four in the overheads. And it's got, um, uh, three eighths inch PT uh, plywood that's used on the side, which is beefier than what's put on the house. It's got 
it's screwed together, not nailed, so it doesn't slip apart like my shingles have blown off the roof and superstorm sandy and glory and all those. It's um as I said, all the panels themselves are 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 are, are connected with stainless steel bolts that I specially bought, through bolts, not just screws, but through bolts. Then though then those groups of three, because it's it's when you connect a, a, a DC based solar system to groups of three panels. Are connected with a seven inch through bolt, galvanized through bolts, and then the verticals themselves are held down by uh, by eight inch through bolts that go through perpendicular to the wood. And then there's hurricane tie downs that are used throughout the top to hold down the roof, the roof structure. So uh, if you if you go look at the documentation I provided the town as part of the state of Rhode Island permit request back in May of 2019, it shows you a, a whole analysis of wind shear and wind uh, loads and what the requirements were and why wood is better than metal. Typically what would happen, somebody would put in a top of pole mount in such a situation, you'd have to put three of them. You have to go down six feet with a six inch pole and you'd have to trust top of pole mount, which catches all the wind coming from the north and east, because obviously they face south, is going to be strong enough to do it. Since I did exactly that in New Hampshire with 130 inch metal, I can tell you for a fact that the wooden structure is far more flexible, far more durable than is the structure of the metal that you use it. The, the metal racks that you could buy that were off the shelf, I would rather have done it that way, didn't fit into the space. Okay. So that's why I didn't use metal racks. So I don't do it. I have no other questions. My, my question is a structure that you have. You're talking about the structure that you have thought about. But every every solar panel now in the, in, the, in the town that's put on a roof assumes the house is built is built to specs and it's just built with builders. There's no structural engineer that does it, and that's the standard but by definition. You can put it on a roof. Could you let the members speak, please? You said it's not a typical situation. System. So because it's not a system, uh, then the requirements. No, ma'am. Ground mounted ground mounted solar is a very common system. That that aspect of it, ground mounted solar, is very common. If you go look at any of the solar farms from from Southchester Point, the ones that are going around, they're ground mounted. The issue in my case, or the difference thing, the unique thing about it, is the electrical way that it works. Instead of each panel being connected to the grid. And each panel having a DC to AC inverter, because solar panels make DC electricity, not AC electricity. What happens in my case is you collect the DC in groups of three, you combine them in a combiner box, which is a different animal. DC is a different animal from AC. Then you go with a very thick cable, about that big, into, in, into a charge controller. The charge controller is then charge batteries. And the batteries go to inverters. So, so this this is the system. I understand, this is, system. I understand what you said. To me, the way you describe what you constructed is an individual structure not going on the roof. And therefore, the structural engineer, in my opinion, should be reviewing your hold downs and your plywood and whether it's four by four or six by six. This is a typical house construction. Well, if you give it to the state of Rhode Island, which is what's required by law, if you give them the permit, which I filled out the documentation for, which I filed with the town, and the state of Rhode Island comes in and demands that, then I suppose that's correct. But I don't believe it is the uh, requirement of this review board to determine what is rugged enough or what is not the reality you is are, Mrs. Burnett you are 100 percent correct but what this board is is to determine whether it meets the special use criteria one of them will it will not create a nuisance or a hazard okay Mr. plain and simple but Mr. Mr. Nutt that yeah. we're we're asking that this approval be subject to my client getting the applicable permits he's sort of in a and then he's in it, in a, in a, he's asking for a special use permit for the system. The questions we're asking right now would be no different whether we're in the situation we are now or whether he came before the board asking for a special use permit to construct from ground zero. 
Same yeah. question, but same exact question. But, 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 but the, the problem, the difficulty is <coughs> why if you start going ground zero, you're saying the building inspector won't give the issue your <coughs> permit because it's already built. He won't. So let me, let me just okay, well, okay. Well, let me just well, let, 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 let me finish. So I want to get my point. Because it's already built and he doesn't want to endorse something that's already been done legally or without the, the proper zoning board review. We're not, so he won't, he he's, has to tear it down before he can even have No, it. no, no, but I'll tell you what, that someone just dropped in the middle of the packet an inspection by a structural engineer that stamped and certified that says, I've inspected this, this is structurally sound. Oh, okay. By a licensed electrical engineer says, this electrically is sound. So, so totally different. That, that, I've got nothing but, it's beefy and heavy construction. No, actually, Wait, sir, I, drew, I provided three-dimensional drawings as a result of the of the. I know that. I can make Show drawings to myself, Mr. Burnett. I can make drawings as well, but it doesn't mean I'm a certified engineer. I'm not doubting you can build it, Mr. Mr. Not. Your point. That's a good point. So, in in addition to asking for the requisite state building permits, the rec the, the permits that are required by the ordinance, I'd ask that you make it subject to. Structural engineer and an electrical engineer saying that this is that. I think my, my guys. Why are, not? Why not ask for a continuance and get that? Why should we approve it for the contingency? Why not? Well, I'm not going to be able to get it. I, that I'm not going to be able to get the permits. I'm not saying the permits, but but the, the second part I would ask. That's your option. Can we please speak? Yeah, go ahead. Take a second. Take five minute recess. Take a five minute break. <clears throat> Thank you. 
The zoning board of review is it's now back in session. Uh, Mr. Cook, go ahead. It's hooked, it's hooked with, it, with an H. I'm sorry. Hey, can I postpone, continue this hearing until the October meeting? Uh, I'd be good with that. I would, that's my request. I don't know about anyone else. It's been going on this long. So does someone want to make a motion that we can let me get the day of the October meeting? Absolutely, Mr. Hood. That would that would give us time to address Mr. Knox's uh, question as well as this war was a question regarding an engineer's report in regards to construction. I'm not quite sure how to express this, but it seems to me I would have two areas of concern. The, the design is one thing, which I think would be covered by an engineer, either a, you know, a structural engineer or something like that. But the other part of this is the actual implementation. I mean, there are things buried in the ground or things behind the covers. How would we determine? Ordinarily, you would have an inspection process that would look at, at the things as they went along. In this case, we have a system that's already embedded in walls, already embedded at the ground. So a, 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 an engineering report that examines the design says nothing about implementation. Well, let me ask you, Mr. Burnett, if I might, well, everything, everything's visible. Yeah. All the wiring's visible, all the bolts are visible. So no there's, is better there's than nothing, that. there's nothing except when it goes into the ground from the place, it goes underground to the house 10 feet. You can dig it up. Right, and that's just the electrical. That's just a, it's a cable, which is also right. in a conduit. It's a well. shielded cable. It's a shielded cable in conduit. Right. So I and and you can see it going into the ground. You can see it coming out. Okay, yeah, we're good. Thank you. Yeah. Right, thank you. All right, so can I have a motion to continue the petition of Christopher Burnett to a regularly scheduled meeting of October 21st, uh, 2021. I have a second. Motion to be made and second to continue the petition of Christopher and Deborah Burnett to a regularly scheduled meeting of October 21st, 2021. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is the appeal of Mark Boulard, uh, Raptor C. Gray, and Marjorie Gray, the appellants. Um, I'm sure the attorneys are aware that I have a conflict with this, as does Ms. Horowitz. We just learned that, Mr. Chairman. So, therefore, we won't have a forum to hear this time. Understood. And then my situation could potentially in all likelihood resolve itself. Be resolved itself within the next month's time. Understood. Okay. And unfortunately, we only have one alternate because no one from the community has come forward. I understand. And, and again, uh, we just learned of this uh, a few minutes ago. So, well, you know, unfortunately, it's something I thought of on the way here tonight myself. Yeah, understood. Uh, didn't need it. Um, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. So, with that being said, do I have a motion to continue this petition to our regularly scheduled meeting of September 16th? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Motion has been made in the second to continue the appeal of Mark Watt, trustee for Apple C. Grant Marjorie Gray, to our regularly scheduled meeting of September 16th, 2021. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? All right, folks. Right. 
next item on the agenda is a petition by Nancy Paolino Cruxor seeking a special use permit to convert a non conforming attached garage into living space located at 15 Shell Ave. Please raise your right hand. Name and address for Nancy Paolino Tower 15 Shell Ave. Okay, and board, what you'd like to do? I would like to convert my garage into a family room. Is it an attached garage? Yes. Yeah, I'm not sure why she's in front of us. I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, it's, it's pre-existing. This must have converted from a garage. It's like it was connected to the house. Um, if it were detached, yeah. But is it that the garage in setbacks? The existing it's, it's not going to be any change to the structure as it is. But is it is it in setbacks? The existing one is closed. Is it in setbacks? Chairman, not. Mike Ashola, assistant town planner. It's a similar situation at, um, as to uh, a few months back. Um, I think it was on Greenfield yeah. Avenue. Yeah. Yeah. The ordinance doesn't specify whether it's detached or, um, uh, you know, or, or in, in one structure. So we were erring on the side of caution and, and, um, and having the application come before you. So, Mr. Gavin, the board of Symphony Wisdom could decide that. I mean, I understand what Mike's saying. This is an attached garage. You know, so Mike said, well, you just kind of aired on the side of portion. I. Discussion. Mr. Chairman, I intend to, to make a motion based on the discussion of regards to Newport's powers. Um, it appears as though she doesn't need to be in front of us. And, and I appreciate our assistant planners' due diligence to err on the side of caution, but my thought is that um, I'm not sure. So, if you have your opinion, I'll be quick fire. Would it be appropriate to make a motion? Absolutely. Mr. Chairman, I, I make a motion. In other words, you believe that she does not require a special use permit in order to convert the garage to family. Well said. Yes, sir. Could I have a second on that? Second. Most have been made in second that um, board deems that the applicant does not need a special use permit uh, to convert her existing attached garage uh, and convert it into uh, a living space. Can, can I say something? Absolutely. Uh, I'm just looking and maybe I'm wrong, but so my understanding is even if it may just be a formality, but if the existing garage is in setbacks, you are theoretically building in setbacks by finishing it. Oh, you're building walls, you make no, it's not doing anything on the outside. I think the inside footprint hasn't changed. Footprint hasn't changed, but could we 
that, <laughs> well, that's how it works in some of the other right, places. Right, but now, okay. Yeah. okay, okay, good work. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> that's why you're on the Okay, so a motion's been made in the second. Um, that the applicant, the NCA, I pronounce it Clef, so it's yeah, That's it's correct. It is correct. Uh, does not require a special use permit in order to convert her existing uh, garage, attached garage uh, into interior space. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, opposed? All set. Thank you. Is there anything we can do about the price of plywood? <laughs> Only if you can get the price of your cedar shingles down as well. I don't want to talk about that. Thank you very much. You're quite welcome. Okay, next item on the agenda is petition by Christopher and Mary Collette, seeking a dimensional variance for a side yard setback. Uh, Article 4, Section B. Construct a 2400 square foot in ground pool located at 2271 East Main Road. I pronounce your names correctly. Coet. Coet. Your French name. I don't know if that's correct, but raise your right hand. Uh, I'll go with it. He's an engineer, so go with her. Okay. Raise your right hand. That's where it tells the truth. <laughs> sure. Full name and address for follow. Uh, sure. Mary Coet, 2271 East Main Road. Chris Coet, 2271. Okay. For the record, um, Darrell has a conflict. Yeah, so you're going to so you're gonna gonna refuse yourself. You don't even know that. Oh, no words. Hi, neighbor. For my kids to love. <laughs> okay, so why don't you tell the board what you'd like to do? Yeah, we'd like to put it in a pool. Um, it's 20 by 40 or, or something within that size. Uh, our backyard is quite large. Uh, there's the woods on the side, so we're really not that close uh, relative to other houses. And uh, we do have a septic system in the back. So uh, just depending on how you look at it, it gets a little bit close to the septic and the septic back on the back. Okay. I'm a little confused. You said the pool is 20 by 40? Yeah, I think there was a mistake. How did we end up with a picnic? I'm not sure. What is wrong? Because put an Olympics on this side. I was sitting there going, what are we? Is this like SeaWorld? <laughs> <laughs> well, right. I included the, like a surround. I just kind of boxed out an area that would be the pool and patio. So I think it was accidentally. So I think yeah, it's I really right. like the whole chain. Yeah. Okay. But the pool itself is roughly 20 by 40. Yeah. So 800 square foot pool, but including, and I guess for lot coverage purposes, everything around it, your landscaping comes out to about roughly 2,400 square feet. You do have to take into consideration the coverage, but it still keeps you below, well, so you don't require any lot coverage damages. So what you're seeking is a 15 foot Side yard balance, just something with real size. So, do you want to so our, well, our, no, our yard, our lot is kind of a weird shape. So, we have a long skinny part that comes out to East Main Road, but then, oh, but then like our lot is stick. kind of oriented the other way. Oh, so you're like a hockey stick. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. The side yard requirement is 15, and they're proposing 10, so the variance would be 5 feet. Let's see. Yeah, that oh, um, if I look at the dimensional variance tissue, right, it states that the side yard setback requirement is 15, uh, proposed distance 10. Um, Does that make yeah. sense to you? Are you proposing to be 15? Well, I'm sorry, okay. 10, feet, right. 10 feet from the property line? Yes. So you're going to look for a five foot barrier. Correct. All right. 
a regular shaped lot. The bleaching field is one area, the driveway is the other, and you've got the hockey stick. Pretty much it? Pretty much it. Anybody else have any questions? Uh, let me check the files. I know there's one of butter in the audience. <laughs> Are no letters in the files. We have any of butters in the audience that would like to speak to this. Okay, see none. Uh, Chris and Mary Coet are before the board under tax assessor's map 39, last before D, uh, seeking a five foot side yard variance for the purpose of installing an 800 square foot swimming pool in the yard. Uh, Mr. Board. Mr. Chairman, um, a pool is a reasonable accessory use to a primary residential use. Five foot variance is minimal, and if you die, it allows you more than So I have to Thank you. Mr. Raposo. I also move to approve Mr. State's Thank you. Ms. Horowitz. I move to approve the Mr. State's Thank you. Mr. Horowitz. Chairman also votes to approve the reasons previously stated by Mr. Morton. Good proof. I got it's not a 2400 schedule. <laughs> I, was just, I, was, I was dreading the discussion. That's a lot of work that. for me. It's a lot. <laughs> Everyone's invited to the pool. Like a date. Thank you. Appreciate it. Welcome back, Mr. Zero. All right, next item on the agenda is issued by Norman Ruth Stevens, owners in dimensional variants. And uh, a lot size and a special use permit for to perform an administrative subdivision, creating less conforming on a unconforming lot of record. Spell based on this, the chairman is going to recuse himself from this and turn it over to Mr. Board. Okay, I can show that good evening. Good evening, you're coming up. I'm going to do most of the talking. Uh, Mr. Chappelle, tell us what you'd like to do. All right. So let's start with saying that uh, my son asked me to go to dinner in the morning. And when I said I can't, I'm at the zoning board. He said, oh, yeah, I am too. Give me a hand sign. So <laughs> that's how I got here. Stevens owned two lots uh, side by each over uh, on the subject property. You know where you are if you are up towards the very northern end of Portsmouth and you're on Bluart Drive, which is right before, I call it. Uh, Can you yeah. just talk into the microphone so everybody else can hear? It's right towards the end of Portsmouth and it's on the right hand side. The Stevens owned two lots. One is owned and occupied by them, and the second is by their son. The two lots are conforming in every way, except that they are 28,000 and 26,000 square feet, respectively. There are, all they are trying to do is to move a lot line so their son owns the garden he has traditionally been planting, and that they keep their land because it may become apparent in the future that they have to sell their lot. They don't want to sell their son's garden. That is done every day of our lives as an administrative subdivision. It's an administrative subdivision with two lots that are side by side, move a lot line. And it can be done as a matter of right as long as moving the lot line doesn't make a pre existing lot more non conformal. So let's start with the fact that both lots are under 30,000 square feet. So they're technically pre-existing non-conforming lots. With that said, when you move the lot line, it does not create a lot coverage variance on the new lots. You're taking basically 6,000 square feet from parents season and adding, making their lot from 28 to 22. And you're adding 6,000 to junior 
making his 22 to 28. That's it. That lot doesn't cross a septic line. It doesn't change any electric lines. It doesn't create lot coverage variances. It doesn't create setbacks on anything. There's still a hundred foot setback. When you apply for administrative subdivision, planning board says we would sign it if we could, but we can't because you don't pass one of the criteria. And one of the criteria is you are making a non-conforming lot, and one that's 28,000 square feet, 22,000 square feet, that's less conforming. Even though you also say, hey, but that 21,000, 20,000 square foot lot, I'm making 26, I'm making that one more conforming. So it's really just kind of a swap from the kid's lot being as non-conforming as mom and dad's lot, and mom and dad's lot now being less conforming as to that. But other than that, it could we need a single variance that says that we are creating a lot that is less conforming. Technically we're creating a new lot and that lot has the square footage. Sorry. And it goes from 28,000 the exact number to 22,590. And that is the only variance that you're creating a 30,000. That if we were coming in in a new subdivision, that have to be 30,000, then we'd say we need a dimensional variance to go down to 22 and we would have to say it's more than a mere inconvenience and it's the least relief necessary yep. so in this case we're not doing it for a financial gain the last i checked giving land to your son is never a financial gain and we're really just doing it to make the reality of what is happening in the field and what has happened in the field over the years the truth it would be similar if we had a neighbor that had been kind of adversely possessing at 6,000 feet for the last 10 years. But obviously it's been with permission by the sun. So it's, it, I think from the variance point of view, it's really more than a variance. So don't you want to sit down It's okay if you, we don't mind if you, Sorry. Sorry. Mr. Sorry. Sorry. Thank, you. Okay. thank you. Thank you for mentioning that. I, I agree. Feel free to sit down. No one's present. So that's really all it is. But I think the actual standard of the least relief necessary more than mere inconvenience. The desire is to allow the children to have what they have been using over the years. You're certainly worried about if something happens to the season that has to be sold. They want to be able to create the situation where I'm not selling my house anymore. So they're really fixing the lot lines to what they have really historically been by agreement. And because it, to me, if a tree falls in the middle of the woods and over here, the fall over here, the fall, you're just changing the lot sizes. Nothing is, the neighborhood is no more or less non conforming. Because of the non conformity, it also has the Article 6.24. Everything is exactly how it is. So fire and safety are still maintained for adequate uh, protection for fire and safety. You still, there are no setback variances. So you obviously are still average more than the setbacks in the neighborhood because you're 20% compliance. And all of the houses in this neighborhood, both on Bullard and on Marshall Drive, we put the square footage in, they all were pre existing non conforming when they swatched and made it R30. They all average 20,000, 28,000. So it's still right into the average of the neighborhood. So I think all of the criteria are not considered that as well. So, Mr. Schell, um, under the petition, I see dimensional variance and special use. Is your dimensional variance due to uh, non conforming lot size? So you need to go through the criteria. Of substandard lots of record. Is that correct? The special use permit is the substandard lots of record, which would allow adequate space for fire 
provide adequate light. Yeah, that's what that's for. That's what I tried to okay. And the variance is merely because if this were one big lot and we were trying to divide it into two, we couldn't meet the criteria that both are 30,000 square feet. Okay. And we're taking a 28 to 22 and we're making it a 28 and a 22 the other way. That's it. The only really necessary. Okay, board members, any questions? Uh, Abutters or interested parties? Bell, uh, do you have anything to say before we vote? No, thank you. Uh, <laughs> all right, Mr. Farrell. Chairman, I vote to approve the local dimensional variance and for the special use permit for substandard model record. This is a very simple case of a lot line shifting from one lot to one of a lot line shifting in between two lots. Um, uh, I understand that we can do a, a special use for yes. two lots of pain for substandard for substandard lot of record, but um, it has no impact on no adverse impact on neighborhood and it's good for the residents. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Post, I also need to approve the information on the age of special use permit. Ms. Martin? I'd like to approve both variances for the reasons we just stated. Mr. White? Yeah. I hope to approve the reasons we just stated both. The chairman also votes to approve. This just makes perfect sense. Slot lines are moving, they're not requesting excessive relief. We meet the criteria. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Is Mr. Not in the building? <laughs> Did he just like leave for the day? I'm <laughs> just kidding. He was like, by Christopher Kane owner, seeking a dimensional variance of side yard setback and a special use to construct a 24 by 14 shed on a non conforming lot of record located at 14 Brant Road. Okay, I'm not even going to ask you to raise it. <laughs> 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 to tell the truth. I do. Okay, full name and address. Bob. Uh, Christopher Kane, 14 Brant Road. Okay, uh, Mr. Kane, go ahead and explain to us what you'd like to do. Um, I'd like a five foot um, setback. My neighbor signed off. My buddy neighbor signed off. I don't know how that's good. Yes. Is it a, let me stop there just to make sure. Are you looking for a five foot variance or a 10 foot variance? 10, 10, 10 foot variance. Okay. Right. But no lock coverage variance. What's that? No lock coverage variance. In other words, you're not going to exceed the lot coverage. No. Okay. So, go ahead, continue. Yeah, the 15 would put it right against my house. I kind of just want to step back a bit more. Um, what's interesting is you're looking for a 14 by 24 foot shed, but you don't have a garage. No, I have my own garage. My house. Oh, it's under the house. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Why such a big shift? Well, I just rules work. Because you realize you can put a 10 by 12 shed without even being. I know. I already got a design. I need to have a big shed doing my kind. <laughs> Primarily, it's just the tools. Yeah, tools, storage. Yeah. Okay. 
your downfall professor to drive. Yeah. Yep. All right. Action. Okay. Okay. So uh, behind you a bunch the public access down the waterfront. Correct. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's actually, yeah, the railroad tracks are trying to play. Yeah. A lot of trees back there, I don't want to go on the trees. Right, right. See, the thing is, is that we generally have to go by the least belief necessary. Okay. That's the key word in this. And what is considered a hardship that amounts more than mere inconvenience. In other words, if you denied it, what hardship would this be on you? I'd have a hard time moving, I'm moving my cars around. That would be a hardship. Future septic system. It brings up most areas. Um, why couldn't the shed be moved back further? Uh, and I'm just going by your drawing where it looks like if you went back a bit, then you could come over a bit and not even put fire and, um, any sort of barriers. Yeah, the 15 feet was still kind of put like a small yard. It's kind of hard to see in the diagram. No, I know. Just aesthetically, it is. Questions from any of the board members? Go ahead. Mr. King, do you have a one car or two car garage? Two. Two car garage. Yeah, go ahead. Is the garage underneath the structure itself? It's not attached or detached. Correct. Yeah, the reason I think. My neighbors have the same size steps. Yeah, so I got kind of magic. Right here. They probably could just built it. My guess. Those stuff. So it's just on your drawing that the wood set expanded kind of six foot three. That what you're using for six foot three or or is that just a standard drawing that they provide? Um, honestly, I can't remember. It's been a while. But they should say it on plans. It's a standard plan. Says wall height seven four five seven feet. Good try. In this case, most of them are a big chunk of this and everything has to be like the garage. Either of them is probably the probably wooden space. Exactly. Yeah, it is. Right. I have no storage. <laughs> so even though the big is like the house, you have storage space. The shallow is limited. Yes. Very nice. So can you put a condition on the electricity and heating to the unit? I, I, I guess I would ask. Um, absolutely, you can. We can pose that condition. I guess I would just ask that. So it can't be finished and used for something other than storage. Is that for electricity helpful? No. Nice. So yeah, we could. All we have to do is propose a condition that if approved, that you know, it 
It's not electricity. I mean, you can have lights. It's it's right. more heating. Okay. So you can propose. Okay. I, I came up to my house. I need the house. Okay. Yeah. So just. Okay. Well, I a condition that no heating, so there cannot be any heating. If the petitions approved. If the petitions approved. We have the motion been made second to. Um, Quiet condition if approved that there be no heating, uh, just heating to, to the structure. Yes. Okay, that there be no heating allowed in the structure. All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Okay. Uh, is there anything else you want to add, Mr. Kane? Okay. Um, Stan and Ernie? Ah, uh, yes, I have to go through special guests right here because it is a substandard law of record. Right. Uh, that's right. So, if approved, would it still allow adequate space for fire protection? If we approve this, would there still be adequate space for fire protection? Yes. Okay. Would it provide adequate light and air between the buildings? Yes. Okay. Would it alter the character of the neighborhood or adversely affect the neighboring yeah. properties? Would it create lot coverage and setbacks less than the lot, average lot coverage? Would it impose a substantial detriment to the public or immediate case? Okay. All right. Um, I have to ask for about his interested parties. Here's a letter. Here is a letter. Yeah, yeah, I submitted a letter from my address. Okay. Uh, uh, and the owner of 2 Brent Road, the budding property of 14 Brent Road, I am now going to mention a variant of the sidewalk setback for the construction of a 14 by 24 foot shed. Is over the five feet from our cover point. Loss the volume. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak to this petition? Okay, see none. Christopher Kane is before the board for tax assessor's map for 17, lot 27, seeking a special use permit for substandard lot of record. And also a 10 foot side yard variance for the purpose of installing a 14 by 24 foot shed. This is the board. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'll take the uh, special use permit for substandard water pressure first. Let me just bring that to your conclusion. Um, in regards to the requested variance, the petitioner has based. We have two car garage living space. It has no garage detached and um, this lot coverage is only not nearly 9%. So I don't think he's encroaching. And I think the guy in the storage area can imagine where they are. So I go to Thank you. Mr. Purell, Mr. Chairman, I also move to approve the special permit for substandard lot of records and the side yard variance for the side yard support. Thank you. Mr. Raposa. We're covering this for a Both the dimensional variance and the special use, correct? I didn't have Charlotte. I vote to approve both variances. Thank you. The chairman will also vote to approve the special use permit. I believe the applicant has met all the criteria of that. And also the dimensional variance that we agreed to deny must be one of the fair conveniences. But I'll just point out that by right, the applicant really doesn't have any basis to explore the other one's out. That would be the best. So we've got approved. Thanks so much. Thank you. Have a good night. Okay, let's see. 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 Let's
Daniel, Attorney Daniel Rebones, uh, as a politician in 49 Delta Court, on behalf of the petitioner, State Barber, with the Bill Parks. Um, Could I have your last name again? Daniel Rebones. Do you have? Yes. Thank you. So the, the French name theme going is Duplow. Duplow, got it. <laughs> okay. uh, so, uh, Mr. Chairman, the uh, reason for the new packet, and I was uh, working with the assistant uh, planner, uh, my guest, uh, we submitted, uh, there was a revision to the building sketch that was included in the last, on the last page of the packet. Okay. Um, there was a, in the calculations of the grading issue, um, we wanted, there was a revision we needed to make, and it, it revises the actual request for the variance. We had initially requested um, a 65 foot tall building. Um, right. It actually is 70 foot tall building. Um, uh, and I apologize, uh, working with uh, Mr. Osceola, we were able to submit this revised plan that was more accurate right. to, the, to the actual height. Right. So the actual height variance you're looking for is 35 feet. Correct. Right? Had, 35 foot height variance. Correct. We had initially applied for what would have been a 25, a, a, a 30 foot high right. variance. Um, but yes, after after punching the numbers, right. the, it changed. Uh, so we apologize to the board for revising uh, the submission, but we needed to make sure we had the accurate numbers before proceeding. Okay. Um, so if I may proceed. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so as as the board is aware, so uh, the petitioner uh, State Park Removal Boat Works is requesting a uh, variance for the maximum height allowed, 35 feet is allowed, or requesting uh, to construct a 70-foot 70, 70 building um, at the property um, just by way of introduction tonight in attendance. Uh, we have from State Harbor and the uh, John O'Connor, who's the general manager, uh, David McBain, who is the project development director, and uh, State Harbor's ex uh, professional engineer, uh, Daniel Zemanski, from North Northeast Engineers, and my colleague, uh, John Russell. Uh, so, what I'd like to do is have Mr. Zemanski come up and uh, submit testimony to the board regarding. Safe Harbor Navy's uh, petition. Okay. I tell the truth. I do. We'll name and address the bottle, please. Dan Samansky, 39 Sipuja Drive, Narragansett, Rhode Island. Also a French one. Okay. <laughs> My client proposes to build, construct a steel frame building with a footprint of 36,250 square feet. As mentioned, the height is 70 feet from it. The structure is 55 and a half feet from the front property line to the east, and 20 feet from the property lines to the south and west, therefore exceeding minimum setbacks. Utilities required for this construction are available on site, as well as area for water quality for storm water this new proposed uh, this proposed impervious area. Okay, so the question is are they removing a building? Let me let me give you a little bit of my history. Okay. I go back to the Ben Boat Mason days. I used to see our down there way back in the day. Okay, so I'm very familiar with the property. So are they removing any of the buildings to construct this one? Yes. So in the northeast corner of the proposed building. Yeah. Although it's sort of hard to see on this scan document. Yeah. You can make out an outline that, that makes up about a, a fifth of the footprint of right. the proposed building. Okay. That is an existing uh, structure that's going to be removed. Right. Now, as I understand that it, it was originally, I believe, it was a 220 ton travel lift. Is that correct? I'll, I'll have to have okay. Safe Harbor's gentleman answer that. And is it safe to assume that? Part of the request for this would be to accommodate the travelers to go in the building to place larger, you know, 100, 150 foot yachts into that building. Because I cannot imagine the way to get there. 
I've heard the such at meetings, but I have to okay. say, all right, okay. I mentioned it. Right. Okay. All I have to add is that there is a property line that just about bisects the proposed structure. Right. And so that is proposed to be removed. And that is why on this document, you can see that the square footage of the lot in question changes. Yeah. That's because of the removal of that lot. Um, to your knowledge, and, and I don't know why it's just like side down and how they sit there. What is the highest building in the site? So, no, no. Oh, you know. Yeah. So, Mr. Chairman, it, uh, so on site right now, so building one, so the, the, the survey you see in front of you, so to the top, highest top right corner yeah. of the proposed building right there. Thank you, Mike. Um, so, building one is 50 feet uh, high. 50. And, and I believe, uh, I'm not positive, but I believe that uh, petitioner had uh, some years ago requested a variance. So that would be the other highest building down there. Prior to, to the Prior to the decision. request tonight. Uh, exactly, okay. yes. yes. Right. And yeah. it and it, it pleases the board and Mr. Chairman, if I can bring up John O'Connor uh, from Safe Harbor and he to answer your other questions, Absolutely. which I think are you know, questions I would have too, yeah. that he can give you a little bit more background knowledge and he more things that are going on at the Harbor. Mr. Chairman, just quickly before we move forward, I'm not sure if the board recognized okay. the Northeast engineer as an expert. We did not, not civil engineer. I see that he's an expert, our expert, but I don't know if it was not, recognized. Not but, request right. the board. Right. right. So, so I was going to say, I believe that Mr. Zmanski has testified before this board before as an expert witness. Um, if you'd like, I can continue to call him as a witness, or we can introduce his resume um, as a uh, professional yeah. engineer. Uh, I'm familiar with him. He's a protege of Blake Hankerson. <laughs> uh, he is a recognized expert. I make a motion to recognize that civil engineer. Can I have a second? Second that. Was made in second to recognize him as a professional licensed engineer expert. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Here we go. Out. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. Are you ready? Right in? So it tells the truth. I do. Full name and address for Bob. John Clark, 339 Reynolds, North Hills County. Okay, Mr. O'Connor. I, you heard my question. I did, yes. Yeah. So um, uh, you're absolutely right. We we, we just finished uh, a large project last year that incorporated a, uh, a 200 ton traveler. And uh, this variance is uh, would be for a building height so that the building could accommodate the 200 ton letter and uh, a vessel up to 150 feet. Without uh, to move it in with the travel, so right because there is to the best of my knowledge, the case, the best of my knowledge, trying to move the pole of that size, uh, it just it's still drill up the way. That's correct. Um, it's also my understanding that the safe office is the best of a lot of point in that water because a lot of the time on travel requires some sort of way of solving that travel, correct? That, that's correct. So, part of uh, the project that we Finished up last summer. I uh, included additional uh, dockage for larger boats uh, so that we would, we would be able to take uh, uh, on a floating dock up to a 140 foot vessel and, uh, as far as dredging necessary for uh, the draft of those vessels. Right. And along with something of this nature, it proved comes quite an opportunity to stack that town. That's correct. All things that go with uh, uh, What's the downside? You know, with this stuff? I'm asking. Uh, uh, the, 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 the cost. <laughs> it's an expensive, we know that. Um, expensive building uh, in, in engineering of it, as right. well as uh, you know, yeah, yeah. So, so we, we currently have uh, 
any given time between 120 and 140 employees currently. Uh, each, each space would uh, would demand many more employees, and uh, and I'd like to uh, emphasize the fact that that this is uh, for year-round employment, not just uh, seasonal employment. I think at one point it was because there's four proposed bays in that in the warehouse uh, in the storage uh, storage facility, and it's somewhere estimated between ten to twenty employees per bay. That, that's correct. So, <clears throat> so the capital size in which we want it to ship though is the same height as the building. And that we want to ship now? Yeah, I'm just wondering that. Uh, so, so the largest lift that Newport Shipyard has is 500 tons. Uh, our lift is, <clears throat> although the, the capacity, the hauling capacity uh, being a lot less, uh, the, the actual size of it is, is not that much smaller. So it does require that, that height. So same, so I agree. That's good. Yeah. <clears throat> Questions from the board? I know they, you know, the, the land is the old Navy PG boat basin, and it's always been industrial tank farms up in the market. There's no residential one near it whatsoever. Yeah. I don't know why it's that complicated. You know, I don't think they do. Not as big. No, and I think they're going to as high, but this is the first time something like this has come before us. Although I'm not surprised it has, given that Newport Shipyard, which is a safe harbor, but some of the older boat yard shipyards close down. There's larger yachts in the area that we have to have worked on up here now, or even built up. So we are a, a boat building facility, right? Well, yeah. As well as manufacturer of marine and non marine related parts. Right. The, that, that space, and as far as uh, kind of the way that the, the industry is going, boats are just getting bigger because the, the average boat just continues to be. <laughs> and, uh, in order for us to, uh, to kind of maintain our, uh, our presence within the, within the industry. Um, and not lose boats to down south. Uh, we we need to accommodate them in a uh, heat storage uh, size. This is, if I could, Mr. Chairman, I mean, it is its own water clock, you know, marine, marine water right. services. Right. And um, as part of you know, the, the travel lift and the expansion and the adding of the docks for these larger boats, uh, Safe Harbor ADB also. As I'm sure the board is aware, did a, a, a huge expansion and uh, addition to the point where you know there's. there's well, you should say that. No, I'm not. I'm <laughs> aware of it now, but only recently. It's been years since I've driven down there. It's beautiful. But it's beautiful. I have made it a note, made it a point to fly down there and see the point. Is I I I love as as I understand <laughs> as I understand it. I'll get off the track. Point is going to be used at some point for some sort of like wedding venue or whatever. I know three weddings that will be taking place. Right <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we'll so, just say it's very yeah. beautiful and a lot of green space. So it's not just about Safe Harbor or ADP, right. you know, hosting large vessels. And this is important and this is what we're going right. forward. But it's part of a larger scheme of, you know, and plan yeah. and, and, and continuing to do what they've done with the community and be part of the community. So, plus, that includes right here. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> so if I own, which I don't, <laughs> most I do is drive a 28 foot old port watch around the trip. But if I own a hundred foot yacht right now, I didn't want to go to Newport Shipyard, where would I have to take um, And I good. want inside storage. There's not many options. I'd have to head south. You, you, would, you would have to go south. Or you would have to go north uh, to uh, so front front street would have uh, front street has the most comparable buildings for uh, what we propose. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Well, we don't want them. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
this is different. And being thoroughly familiar with the landscape the property, how it's dressed over the years, I'm not surprised. Um, I'm actually a little bit surprised this hasn't come sooner than later. I'm just surprised it's where it is and not over more towards the site. <laughs> Just but um, yeah. <laughs> but um, I think it's a it's definitely an added benefit to town. I think it's what you need to compete in, in current value markets. So, you uh, you've been approved. Good luck. Thank That's you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to the board. Thank you. Last item on the agenda. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Is petitioned by Deborah Desdale and Avery Desdale and Walter White's interventional variant two side yard setbacks and lot coverage with a special use permit to construct an addition to a single family dwelling on a non conforming lot of record located at 0761 Narragansett Avenue on Cruise Island. Are there any conforming lots on no, Cruise Island? No, There's not no, one on a public way. Yeah. Raise your right hand. Way to tell the truth. Yes. Name and address of Bob. And are you going to speak as well? Yes. All right. Well, I'm the architect. Can you pull the mics down just a little? There we go. I'm a little bit taller, but. <laughs> okay. Go ahead and tell us what you'd like to do. Um, yeah. So basically, what we're applying for is a eight foot variance on the uh, south side and the seven variance on the west side. Um, all the existing footprint is there. We're looking to add basically the square off the back of the house. Right. Um, there's a second floor existing and we're looking to pull that second floor back, back as well. Um, and we're basically just squaring it off. We're looking to extend the footprint of the house basically to make more living space. All the bedrooms are staying the same. The front porch is staying. Um, yeah. So you need a seven foot side yard variance yes. on one side, eight foot on the other. Yes. But correct me if I'm wrong. You're not encroaching any more than some of the house already does. Correct. Okay. You're just we're just going back, off. back, and the back needs to be um, fifty-five feet at the back. Right. So from the shortest point, not from the longest okay. point. So we're all within everything. It's just that side setback. We're looking to extend the house and keep within the footprint. The house on the south side of it as well. Um, they are five feet long. So long. They're a little bit closer as well. So there is still an egress way in there. It needs to be. There's no fences or anything. Right. Uh, and then on the north side there, there is a house directly to the side and they share a driveway. So there's not much room over there. Right, because the house now is small. It's only 500. Yeah. 53 yeah. square feet. And there's three tiny bedrooms. That I was going to say. They, <laughs> and one bath. I was going to yeah. say, what is it? One bedroom, the yeah. entire house? Yeah, because yeah, they were all some house. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And we're, we're not, we're in the X zone. We're above everything. So. Right. Oh, good. She's right on the main road. We're just looking to improve yes. the quality of life over there. Okay, so okay. you want to increase by 6.46%. Yep. Okay, so because it's a substandard lot of record, I also have to go over the um, what you call it, special use criteria. That's uh, if this was allowed, would it allow adequate space for fire protection still provide adequate light and air between buildings? Would it alter the character of the neighborhood or adversely affect any neighboring properties? Would it create lot coverage and setbacks, lessen the average of lot coverage and setbacks in adjacent properties? Would it impose a substantial detriment to the public or to immediate neighbors? Anyone have any questions for the applicants? Sue does it on this one, then I help. Okay. All right. Uh, any letters in the file then? I guess we do. Walter White. Oh, that's oh, oh, that was just uh, the names are on the house. Yeah, okay. So the other is, is it a concern? Is 
lenders intended to serve as proof for our merge mutual agreement form and the changes on letter and proposed on our property at 0764 Marion and Captain on Cape Town. Moving forward, we gave Deborah a just date on our letter. Commission made to make all changes to the improvements to the property relationship. Nice, Kate said. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is there anything else in there? That's right. uh, I don't see any of letters. So. Oh, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> All right, that being said, um, Avery Jesdale, Walter White, uh, uh, Deborah Jesdale, yes. here before the board for tax assessors in 1978, Box 65 on Cooper's Island, seeking a special use permit for substandard water record. A seven foot side yard variance, eight foot side yard variance, and 6.46% mock up variance for the purpose of increasing the square footage of the living space of the house. Good morning. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll take the special use request for such standard pot of record for petitioner walked over the criteria. I vote to agree. In regards to the dimensional barriers, the petitioner is not requesting to approach any further than the existing width. So the seven and the eight foot side yard variances, in essence, already exist. Uh, I think the size of the existing house is so small that to deny the petitioner the right to expand. Amounts of more than a mere convenience. In regards to the lot coverage, the lot is only 4,792 square feet in R20 zone. Um, clearly, a severe hardship amounting to more than a mere convenience. And a 6.46% variance request. My opinion more than reasonable. Thank you, Mr. Purell. Mr. Chairman, I also move to approve both side yard variances, the special use for the substantial amount of land, and the lot coverage variance. Thank you, Mr. Raposo. I also vote to approve uh, the variances for the reasons. Thank you very much, Ms. Horowitz. I vote to approve the variances. See, I'm also supposed to approve both the special use permit and the uh, dimensional and lock up experience uh, moving previously stated by Mr. Gordon. Well, set. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Tell your children it's very nice of them to allow them. Oh, yeah, to make so that they have a good future. And they're not, even here, and they're not even here tonight. No. You sat there all night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they did. Uh, yeah. Have a good night. Thank you. Do I have a motion to I have a question. Second. Oh, I just got a motion made. So, who's your mobile table? Aye. Okay. I'll go ahead. I just had a question. Um, maybe you can ask the Labor Department, but do I, uh, is that, do I need to contact the Coastal Resources Manager? Do you have any tweets of Coastal Equipment? Even if I'm not monitoring? Even, okay. Yeah, I'll call them back. Thank you. Yeah, because they would have told you to come here for this. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Mike. You're right. See you guys. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> 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 Take it. It's a setback. It is, it is setback. Right. Okay, that was a, that, 